New details tonight on a bizarre story out of Gainesville involving a giant bird that killed its 75-year-old owner after he fell in his backyard. Animals take many shapes and forms and come in different sizes. Whether you measure in terms of weight or height, there is no denying some animals are huge in comparison to others, even in the same class. What are these abnormally large animals still in existence? Join us as we reveal 20 animals you won't believe their sheer sizes. The giant Maine Coon Cat. Meet Samson, a huge Maine Coon Cat from New York who weighs in at 28 pounds and measures four feet long. The Maine Coon is no ordinary cat. It's the largest domestic cat breed in the world. This breed is mostly found in North America, and it is very likely it descended from European cats brought over to that region by early explorers. These gentle giants can grow up to 10 to 16 inches tall. The most impressive Maine Coon of all is Baravel, a cat from Italy who holds the record as the longest living domestic cat, measuring an incredible 3 feet 11.2 inches. His record was confirmed in May 2018, and he lives a spoiled life with his owner, Cinzia Tinarello, in Vigavano, Italy. If you think that's hard to believe, wait until you hear how the other animals on our list live. The Goliath Frog. This is Andre Nicodi. He's on the lookout for Goliath Frogs. nicodi has been hunting these creatures for decades, but they're a lot harder to find now. The Goliath Frog is the largest living frog in the world, growing to the size of a house cat. Holding one feels like carrying a human baby. These frogs can grow up to a foot long and weigh as much as 7.2 pounds. While they're massive as adults, they don't start out that way. Their tadpoles are the same size as those of regular frogs, but they just keep growing. Adult goliath frogs look similar to regular frogs, just much bigger. They're also incredible jumpers, able to leap nearly 10 feet forward. Surprisingly, despite their size, they don't make loud croaks. In fact, Goliath frogs are mute because they don't have a vocal sack. Maybe we can call them the mute giant, Big Jake the tallest horse. Horses are naturally big animals, but Big Jake was on another level. This Belgian gelding was born at 240 pounds, already heavier than most foals. By adulthood, Big Jake stood an incredible 6 feet 11 inches tall at the withers and weighed 2,600 pounds. Big Jake, a Belgian, which is a breed known for its size, was crowned the tallest horse in 2012 by Guinness World Records, measuring just over 6 feet 10 inches or 20 hands. For comparison, most horses measure around 2 to 2.5 feet tall at the withers. His appetite matched his size, consuming two full buckets of grain and an entire bale of hay daily. Big Jake lived a remarkable life and passed away in 2001 at the age of 20, leaving behind a giant legacy. The biggest rabbit in existence. Up next is Darius, the Flemish giant rabbit who holds the title of the world's largest bunny. Weighing 49 pounds and measuring an astonishing 4 feet 4 inches, Darius was officially crowned by Guinness World Records on April 6, 2010. Owned by a 71-year-old British glamour model, this gentle giant dominated the largest bunny competitions for eight years before retiring in 2019. Rabbits typically live around eight years, but Darius's exceptional health has kept him going strong well beyond that. Goliath Bird Eater The Goliath bird-eating spider is the largest tarantula in the world, found in the rainforests of northern South America. Despite its fearsome name, it rarely eats birds, preferring snakes, rodents, and toads. The biggest known specimen, collected in Venezuela in 1965, had an 11-inch leg span, big enough to cover a dinner plate. Another bred in Scotland weighed 6 ounces at just 2 years old. These massive arachnids live in Suriname, Guyana, French Guiana, and parts of Brazil and Venezuela. Whether you're an arachnophobe or not, the sheer size of this spider is bound to give chills. Hercules the Liger Ligers are incredible hybrids born from a male lion and a female tiger, and they're the largest big cats on the planet. It's a big cat resort here. It's a place where the animals have everything that they could want. These majestic animals can weigh up to a ton and stretch 11 feet long, bigger than either parent species. Hercules, a famous liger at Myrtle Beach Safari in South Carolina, weighs 900 pounds and stands 5 feet tall at the shoulder. 
Even with his massive size, Hercules is known as a gentle giant. Hercules lives at the Myrtle Beach Safari in South Carolina, where he chows down on 30 pounds of meat every day, about the weight of a toddler. With his size, Hercules can leap 30 to 40 feet in a single bound. Now that's wild. Giant African Land Snail The giant African land snail is one of the largest terrestrial gastropods. They have a light to dark brown shells with vertical stripes of a darker shade of brown on them. The shell of the giant African snail reaches up to 7.8 inches in length and 2.7 to 3.9 inches in height. An adult weighs about 2 ounces. The body has two short tentacles and two long ones that have the eyes. As exotic pets though they require careful handling due to their potential to transmit diseases. In the wild, they are often seen as pests consuming over 500 plant species, which can make them a nuisance to farmers. And if that's not bad, it also has a rapid rate of reproduction. Both of these factors ranked it among the world's top 10 invasive species. Lolong. Crocodiles are impressively large reptiles. In fact, a male American crocodile can measure as much as 20 feet long. With sharp teeth, powerful jaws, and an impressive ability to swim and hunt, crocodiles truly make up a few of the world's most dangerous animals. But among all of these giant reptiles, there was one that dwarfed all others in size. His name is Lolong. It was a saltwater crocodile captured in the Philippines and was named after a local hunter who helped capture it in 2011. In September 2011, a 6.14-meter-long crocodile was caught in Agusan del Sur. Nicknamed Lolong, it was the world's largest crocodile in captivity. Lolong weighed over 2,370 pounds and measured 23 feet 3 inches in length. Gariel, are they crocodiles? Are they alligators? Are they dinosaurs? Well, gharials are none of these things. Gharials are most closely related to crocodiles. The gharial is one of the largest of all crocodilian species, with males reaching 16 to 20 feet in length. Females typically grow to lengths of 11.5 to 15 feet. Gharials are highly specialized predators, and although their snout might appear odd to us, it is perfectly adapted to capture the gharial's favorite food, fish. The world's the tallest giraffe. The world's tallest giraffe is a 12-year-old giraffe called Forest. A resident of Australia Zoo in Queensland has been confirmed as the world's tallest giraffe, standing 18 feet 8 inches. Adult males, or bulls, typically measure between 15 to 18 feet, and even newborns can measure the same height as an adult man at 6 feet, once they have found their legs. But towering to the same height as a stack of four mini cars from the ground to the tips of the bony protuberances atop a giraffe's head, Forrest is truly a different breed. Brahma chickens. Giant Brahma chickens are truly fascinating birds with an impressive history. Originating in the United States in the mid, they were initially called Shanghai chickens because they were bred from large fowl brought from Asia. Known for their massive size and gentle nature, they've become a favorite among backyard chicken enthusiasts. These towering beauties are hard to miss because Brahma roosters can weigh up to 18 pounds, while hens average between 9 and 12 pounds. With their calm personalities and striking appearance, it's no wonder they've earned their spot at the top of the pecking order in coops around the world. Coconut crabs. Coconut crabs, or robber crabs, get a bad reputation because they're humongous, they have gigantic claws, and they've been seen eating birds and kittens. You may be familiar with hermit crabs, the adorable and often tiny crustaceans that totter along the beach toting their bodies in seashells. Today, I introduce you to their giant relatives, the coconut crabs. To say that coconut crabs are big would be an understatement. They are mega crabs, their leg span is up to a meter, they have incredible grip strength, and they can lift objects the weight of a 10-year-old child. Coconut crabs can live up to 60 years, reaching sexual maturity at about 5 years old. Their grip strength is so strong it can crack open coconuts, hence the name. They're a true marvel of nature, blending size, strength, and longevity into one incredible creature. The Largest Sea Turtle the leatherback sea turtle is the largest marine turtle in the world, reaching lengths of up to 6 feet and weighing as much as 2,000 pounds. Unlike other sea turtles, the leatherback doesn't have a hard, bony shell. Instead, 
Its top shell is leathery and rubbery, with bones beneath the skin, hence the name. Leatherbacks feed primarily on jellyfish and seaweed, making them an essential part of marine ecosystems. Sadly, these gentle giants have been endangered since 1970, largely due to habitat loss from human development on their nesting beaches. Despite their size and resilience, they need our help to survive. Knickers, the extremely large cow. Coming back to land, our next big animal is Knickers, the enormous seven-year-old Holstein Frisian bull who's captured global attention. The seven-year-old Holstein Friesian stands more than six feet tall, towering over the others on the farm, and weighs almost one and a half tons. This breed, originally from North Holland and Northern Germany, has been bred for dairy production for over 2,000 years. Nickers lives on Jeff Pearson's farm in Western Australia and stands a staggering six feet four inches tall at the shoulder, just three inches shorter than a Mewtwo. Weighing around 1,500 pounds, he is about the same weight as a Toyota Corolla. Nickers is so massive that he's become a star, towering over other cattle. Largest hippopotamus on record. Mubarak, the renowned male hippopotamus, achieved fame in Egypt for his seemingly friendly disposition towards humans. His home was the beautiful Aswan Botanical Garden, situated on an island in the Nile River in southern Egypt, and he became a beloved attraction for garden visitors. Weighing an impressive 9,920 pounds, Mubarak originally hailed from Niger and lived well into the late 20th century. Remarkably, he reached around 100 years of age before his passing in 2017, making him one of the oldest hippos in captivity. Giant Panda if there's one animal that lives up to the saying, you are what you eat, it's probably the giant panda. Nearly every aspect of a panda's life revolves around bamboo. If you've ever visited a zoo, chances are you've been mesmerized by the adorable giant panda. With its striking black and white fur, this bear stands out from the crowd. The black patches on its ears, eyes, muzzle, legs, and shoulders contrast sharply with its white body. While scientists aren't entirely sure why pandas have such a bold color pattern, some believe it helps them blend into their environment. These bears are about the size of an American black bear, standing two to three feet tall at the shoulder and reaching lengths of four to six feet. Males can weigh up to 250 pounds, while females typically stay under 220 pounds. Giant pandas are known for their love of bamboo, but did you know they spend around 12 hours a day eating it? Lion's Mane Jellyfish The lion's mane jellyfish is one of the largest jellyfish species in the world, with an average length of 1.5 feet, but some can grow an astonishing 6.5 feet. It gets its name from its striking mane of long, flowing tentacles that resemble a lion's wild hair. These jellyfish can have up to 1,200 tentacles, organized into eight clusters, which they use to create a trap for capturing prey like fish and crustaceans. The largest lion's mane jellyfish ever recorded stretched an incredible 120 feet. But be careful its sting is powerful and can deliver a painful shock to humans. Imagine swimming alongside this giant. Would you be brave enough like this guy on the screen? The cassowary. Cassowaries are some of the most dangerous and fascinating birds on the planet. So they're listed as class two wildlife in places like Florida. This means anyone wanting to keep one as a pet needs to jump through several hoops including passing specific tests and obtaining a special permit. Related to emus, cassowaries are flightless birds with bristly feathers, known for their size and aggression. Native to the tropical forests of Southeast Asia and Australia, these birds can grow up to 6 feet 6 inches tall and weigh up to 132 pounds that's about as heavy as six mute swans. But here's the kicker. Despite their size, it's their sharp, dagger-like claws that make cassowaries one of the most dangerous birds on Earth. So imagine running into one of these on your morning jog. The sky is painted with a surreal display of ash, reaching unimaginable heights, as if nature unleashes its fury upon us. But what lies beneath this catastrophic event? Could it be an introduction of even greater devastation to come? Join us as we unravel the mysteries of Shivaluch, the massive Russian volcano that refuses to be tamed. Rising majestically above the lowlands, Shivaluch stands as a witness to its explosive might. 
with over 60 eruptions during the Holocene period. This volcanic mountain has a rich and tumultuous history dating back to 10,000 years. Its fiery temperament has shaped the landscape, leaving behind scarred and captivating beauty. The eruptions of Shivalij have left a trail of destruction in their wake, wreaking havoc through debris avalanches, scorching pyroclastic blows, and mighty tephra falls. Understanding these events and spatial distribution of crucial in predicting and mitigating the impacts of these natural hazards. In the chronicles of Shivalish's fiery reign, the last major eruption was 2005, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape. Delving further into history, we discover a series of powerful explosions punctuating the centuries. From the resounding echoes of AD 1030, to the thunderous outbursts of 1964, the volcanic fury of Shivalish has left an indomitable imprint. Remarkably, some of these eruptions, such as those in AD 1050, 1650, 1854, and 1964, may have even wielded climatic influence, their impact potentially recorded in the ancient ice cores of Greenland. As one of Kamchatka's largest volcanic structures, Shivalich boasts a massive volume of approximately 1,300 cubic kilometers, making it an unrivaled force of nature. Its summit, once crowned by the ancient starry Shivalich, bears the marks of a cataclysmic event around 65,000 years ago. The remnants of this ancient mountain gave way to the young Shivalich, a lava dome complex that emerged from the ashes. But Shivalich is a master of chaos and destruction. With a frequency that sets it apart from volcanic brethren, this volcano frequently experiences dome collapses, triggering devastating debris avalanches. The remnants of these eruptions cover the caldera floor, leaving an eerie reminder of nature's immense power. Another tantalizing theory postulates the existence of two distinct slabs beneath the volcano each with its own subduction angle and pressure temperature paths, giving rise to the remarkable diversity of basaltic andesites. 60 eruptions in 10,000 years might not be a big deal until we look at the magnitude of those eruptions. If you remember the Mount St. Helen eruption in 1980, which is still referred to as the most disastrous volcanic eruption in the history of the United States, it claimed 57 lives and had a blast radius of about 6.1 miles from the summit. Scary, right? While well, Shivalich Volcano has had 15 such mega eruptions, which is enough for us to be concerned about. Before discussing the world's largest volcano, we have a short history lesson about the famous eruption of Mount St. Helen. Months before the devastating eruption, a series of ominous signs hinted at the impending disaster. Thousands of small earthquakes, billowing steam, and a massive bulge protruding 450 feet into the sky were harbingers of the volcanic inferno building within the mountain's core. Then, at 8.32 a.m. local time, chaos erupted. A colossal 5.1 magnitude earthquake shook the very foundations of Mount St. Helens, triggering an unimaginable chain of events. The sheer force of the quake triggered an enormous landslide, causing the entire northern face of the volcano to collapse in a terrifying display of destruction. As if that wasn't enough, hot pressurized magma erupted from the depths, unleashing an ash plume that soared to an astonishing height of 80,000 feet, or 15 miles, or 24 kilometers. The surrounding region was plunged into darkness as the blanket of ash settled over the land transforming it into an otherworldly landscape. An area spanning 230 square miles, 595 square kilometers, was obliterated in minutes, leaving nothing but devastation in its wake. It was a deadly blow that claimed the lives of 57 individuals, including the brave volcanologist David A. Johnson and talented photojournalist Reed Blackburn. The once lush and vibrant forest that adorned the slopes of Mount St. Helens was reduced to mere ash within the inner blast zone, extending 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers from the summit. Even trees beyond this zone suffered the scorching heat, 
leaving behind a desolate expanse named the Blowout Zone. But the destruction didn't stop there. The eruption gave birth to deadly mud flows known as lahars, as melting ice and snow mixed with volcanic debris. These monstrous forces of nature wreaked havoc on nearby communities, ravaging homes, roads, and bridges in their relentless path. Even today, 43 years after that fateful day, the impact of Mount St. Helens eruption continues to be felt. Just days before the anniversary, a debris flow formed from the remnants of the eruption unleashed its destructive power, toppling a bridge on State Highway 504, also known as Spirit Lake Highway. Access and power to the Johnson Ridge Observatory nestled in the heart of the blast zone. Now back to Shivalich, let's quick trip down memory lane and explore some of its most recent eruptions. One of the most explosive volcanic eruptions in Kamchatka's history is that of Shivalich on November 12, 1964. With an astonishing volume of small pyroclastic material ejected, estimated at around 0.8 cubic kilometers, the eruption of Shivalich in 1964 left an indelible mark on the landscape. Despite its short duration and occurrence during the dark of night, scientists could piece together the puzzle through meticulous studies of deposits, seismograms, and barograms. One of the key discoveries that shed light on the eruption's character was the identification of the directed blast agglomerate. This coarse-grained resurgent deposit with a distinctive hamaki surface covered 98 square kilometers at the southern foot of the volcano. This type of deposit had been previously observed during the catastrophic eruption of the Bezimiani volcano in 1956. In the case of Shivalush, similarities were drawn to the 1956 Bezimiani eruption. Although the equivalent of the directed blast sand observed in Bezimiani's deposits were not found, scientists still classify the Shivalich eruption as a directed blast type. The young Shivalish volcano had a tumultuous history leading to the 1964 eruption. In 1854, a powerful eruption formed a horseshoe-shaped crater, 1.5 kilometers in diameter, and open toward the south. Over the following century, several extrusive domes grew within the crater, completely filling it. The last dome, with a volume of 0.9 cubic kilometers, was formed between 1946 and 1949. After 1950, the domes exhibited intense fumarolic activity, but no significant explosive activity was observed. The eruption of Shivalish on November 12, 1964, followed a prolonged period of seismic preparation. Earthquakes began to rumble beneath the volcano in January of that year, with a notable increase in frequency and energy from October onwards. Just seven hours before the eruption, earthquakes became so frequent that their records became unreadable, and some were even felt in neighboring towns. At 7.07 a.m., a powerful earthquake marked the beginning of the eruption. The explosive activity commenced, gradually intensifying over time. Incandescent materials erupted about 7.20 a.m., accompanied by volcanic tremors and a surge of airwave energy. Pyroclastic flows cascaded down the slopes in the final stages of the eruption, coinciding with a sharp increase in volcanic tremor energy. The eruption ceased at approximately 8.22 a.m., accompanied by a rapid attenuation of volcanic tremor intensity. The eruption column reached a staggering height of about 15 kilometers. A new horseshoe-shaped crater, 1,750 meters in diameter, and mirroring the contours of the 1854 crater was formed. The destruction caused by the eruption is estimated to have amounted to 1.54 cubic kilometers of volcanic edifice. Another major eruption in Shivalish's history happened in the turbulent year of 1999 when the mighty volcano showed its true colors. From August to December 1999, Shivalush was shrouded in a cloak of clouds, but when the skies cleared, small but mighty fumarolic gas and steam plumes danced skyward, reaching 50 to 200 meters. And if that wasn't impressive enough, there were days when the plumes soared even higher, capturing the attention of all who dared to look. But the real showstopper was the explosive action that unfolded throughout the year. Four short but impactful explosions rocked the volcano, 
unleashing ash-bearing plumes that couldn't be ignored. And seismic activity even detected up to five additional dome explosions, adding an extra element of danger. It was simply a symphony of chaos. On the 11th and 13th and 14th of August, fumarolic plumes gracefully rose above the crater, teasing the onlookers. But it was on August 15th when Shivalich truly made its presence known. In a spectacular five-minute display, an ash explosion shot a plume a staggering 800 meters into the sky, leaving everyone in awe. As months passed, the volcano kept everyone on their toes. Fumarolic plumes rising like phoenixes graced the skyline on various occasions. Whether August, September, October, or beyond, Shivalish was bent on making its voice heard. And then, on the morning of October 27th, an ash explosion sent seismic activity skyrocketing and painted the horizon with an ash plume stretching to the northeast. Seismicity reached a crescendo in late October through mid-November, increasing hazard status. The ground trembled, warning people of the impending danger lurking within Schlievelich's core. On the fateful morning of November 1st, the volcano erupted explosively, spewing ash up to an altitude of 5.5 to 6 kilometers, leaving an indelible mark on the southern landscape. Dome explosions continued to punctuate the following days, a symphony of shallow earthquakes and tremors that made everyone hold their breath. On November 24th, the sky witnessed a dramatic gas and ash plume reaching 3 kilometers above the crater. But Shivalich wasn't finished yet. It ejected more captivating plumes in the following weeks. As 1999 drew to a close, Shivalich had one final surprise. On the morning of December 27th, a possible gas and ash plume hinted at its untamed spirit, leaving us wondering what wonders the future held for this majestic volcano. So why is this ancient volcano making news again? In the dead of night, just after midnight on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, the Shivalich roared back to life, and over the next six hours, it reached a crescendo, spewing forth a colossal ash cloud and stretched over an astonishing area of 108,000 square kilometers, 41,700 square miles. Can you even imagine the magnitude of this event? Reports from the Kanchatka branch of the Geophysical Survey of the Russian Academy of Sciences indicate that the ash cloud soared to a jaw-dropping altitude of 20 kilometers, 12.5 miles. Picture this, a towering column of ash piercing the sky, painting a dark veil above the snowy forests and rivers. It was a sight to behold simultaneously mesmerizing and terrifying. But the impact didn't stop there. The ash cloud carried by the winds drifted westwards, descending upon nearby villages with relentless force. Houses, streets, and fields were soon buried under a thick layer of gray volcanic dust, reaching depths of up to 8.5 centimeters, 3.3 inches. This was the most substantial ashfall the region had witnessed in over 60 years. As if the volcanic eruption wasn't enough, the region experienced another jolt. A magnitude 5.8 earthquake struck off the coast of Kamchatka approximately 24 hours after the eruption began. Russian scientists believe it to be an aftershock from an April earthquake. The situation became even more critical with lava flowing from the volcano melting snow and raising concerns about mud flows along the nearby highway. Schools were forced to close, and residents were ordered to stay indoors, seeking refuge from the relentless ashfall. The entire region came to a standstill, paralyzed by the volcanic chaos. The aviation community was not spared either. Volcanologists issued a code red warning for flights, urging pilots to remain vigilant and monitor the ever-changing meteorological conditions. Safety was paramount, and precautions were taken to ensure the well-being of all those navigating the skies. Who knows what else this volcano has in store? Do you think it will ever go extinct? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like it, 
share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more content.